What's up everyone? In this video we're going to discuss the labels on food at the grocery store. Specifically, what does it mean when you see a label and it says nothing, but then on another food that's very similar, it says USDA organic. What does that mean? What's the difference between these two products? Is it worth it? Why is this one so much more expensive? They look the same, right? Like, well, what's going on in this bottle that would make an entire section of many grocery stores have this specific group right here that you'll see just called organic foods? Like, what does that even mean? Does it have more nutrients? Is it healthier? Is it less calories? Is it better for sports? Like, what does it do? Why do people buy this? Who's buying this? What's the history behind it? That is all great questions, and that is exactly what we're going to dive into today. Now, let's check out a few things when it comes to this organic concept. What is this exactly? What we need to know first and foremost is the history of it. Now, there are these chemicals called nitrates and phosphates. Nitrates and phosphates are naturally occurring elements within our planet. And after World War II, there was such a large amount of it that was no longer being used for war-related purposes that we were able to basically sell them to the farmers. Now, these farmers uh, realized that by putting these nitrates and phosphates into the soil would help plants grow quickly, they could rotate the soil, it would help the farm diversity, and really all in all it made better profits for them and as time moved on they realized well these chemicals would result in us not only being able to grow more food not only being able to make more money uh, but things just in general are cheaper because if the plants grow up quicker they use less water as well so it's just very beneficial for the system the problem is is that this began a revolution of synthetic additives and synthetic additives meaning chemicals that aren't naturally occurring in normal doses to foods that humans consume and then there were side effects now what this created was essentially an industry where there would be a type of food that was organic meaning there are no GMOs which is genetically modified organisms. There is no irradiation, which would be like radiation treatment of the food. There would be uh, no sewage sludge or minimal sewage sludge from these farms. There would be no preventable antibiotics. There's no uh, antibiotics being placed into the foods themselves or, or the animals themselves. There are no growth hormones uh, designed to help it grow faster. There are no fertilizers or pesticides that are synthetic, that are non-naturally occurring in those doses within the foods themselves in nature. And this creates the concept of farmer's markets. Yeah, you might see these from time to time on the side of the road even. Uh, farmers selling oranges or any other citrus on the side of the road. Typically, these are organic foods that are simply unlabeled. Now, you might be asking, well, how do they place these chemicals onto the foods? Well, there are many different machines. Uh, here's an example of using a, a flyby plane to simply spray a mist over a field. And this mist could include growth hormones. It could include pesticides. It can include uh, a variety of things to keep any pests out or to help promote growth. Now, many farmers that do not use these type of chemicals they have to rely on natural means. Remember the synthetic fertilizer and synthetic pesticides, but regular and authentic ones that exist in our environment uh, are totally fine with them. So here's an example. This bug is called an aphid. It is basically the mosquito of plants. This little guy will go in and he will drink the plant's fluid. It will, he will slowly kill the plant itself. I personally find these very common in my broccoli, in my flowers, um, in my spinach. So what do I do? I introduce into my gardens ants and I introduce into my gardens ladybugs because these two creatures love to eat aphids. 
these creatures are enemies. So I introduce it. And as a result, I have a solid harvest and I can grow, you know, whatever variety of foods that I please. And depending on the time of the year, I can grow peppers and I can grow carrots and different citrus fruits and spinach, especially. Uh, even here in Arizona, even here in the desert. Now, one thing that exists, um, again, when it comes to non-organic food is, again, the, the synthetic hormones that can go into the foods themselves, whether it's a spray or an injection. And these steroids, just like steroids in people, can make the plants much larger. Um, here's a couple interesting photos of uh, various world record foods, such as potatoes, apples, carrots, strawberries, onions, watermelon, uh, this variety of lettuce, I forgot the name of it, this mushroom, this carrot, and yes, it even could work on a bull, <laughs> like on a cow, and uh, that's intense, because this type of variety of foods does give you all of the nutrients that you need to live your life, but when you introduce these types of uh, intensive chemicals, they do cause them to grow larger. They do get um, huge very quick. Um, but the problem is, is you don't know the long-term side effects of taking in these synthetic pesticides, these synthetic hormones, and these are not measurable things. And the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, very much so will tell you these are safe for consumption. And it's true. They have done experiments, and in moderate to high doses, these chemicals don't necessarily cause acute, immediate effects. But the long-term effects are unmeasurable. We just don't know. What we do know is that this generation is dying quicker for a variety of variables and reasons than the previous generations. Now, it could be our calories, our fat intake, our cholesterol intake, it could be all the sugar, it could be a ton of things. But why add in an additional confounding variable, an additional reason to hurt our bodies? There is no reason. And that is why organic foods is such a, a prevalent thing in many supermarkets. Yes, they're a little more expensive because the label and the regulations and uh, frankly growing it is more expensive. So the farmers make less money. But when you purchase local fruits and vegetables, it reduces shipping costs and it allows the farmer to interact with the community. This is not only something that is helping our environmental health, if you look at the six components of health, but it helps your body, it helps your physical health. And while organic food doesn't necessarily have a significant amount of more vitamins and minerals, you can rest assured that a lower amount of pesticides, a lower amount of hormones, a more environmentally friendly series of growth patterns has occurred. And at the end of the day, you don't have to worry about what these farmers are doing, um, because in a general sense, these are regulated terms. That is all for the organic unit. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope you have insight as to what it is when you see farmers markets or roadside stands. And I hope you see the benefit when you go to the grocery store and now you see organic foods like, is this even good for me? Is it more beneficial? The answer is resoundingly yes, but there's always a cost to pay. And in my opinion, that cost is worth it because there's nothing more expensive than time, time on this earth. Make the investment, buy the healthier food, buy local, and monitor what you put into your body because at the end of the day, all you have left is you. Take care.